I have been living with a, a dark secret. I've, uh, I've lived with epilepsy all my life. In fact, when I was young, I didn't realize I was having seizures. I'd just be overcome with an aura of loneliness, which is hard to understand. Feeling sick, feeling hot just for 30 seconds during games, when I was at school, when I was at work, and I just lived with it because I thought that's what everybody else did. So anyway, I was having five seizures a day and I got caught on Channel 7 interviewing the, the then captain of the Socceroos. And this is how I got caught. I'm standing beside the camera, I'm asking questions, and then you hear my voice become distorted. You can actually only see at the guy I'm interviewing, but his reactions to everything that I'm doing behind the camera tells the story. Scratching his ear and, and apparently, look at my microphone. I ask him a question and don't give him the mic. He's answering the question and I take the mic away from him. I didn't know it was happening, he didn't know it was happening, but I got caught. So I lived in fear of discrimination now. They're not going to give me a microphone if I've got epilepsy. But I was amazed that people were so understanding. You know, they, they said, oh, we'll cut to a shot of the crowd and we'll turn your mic down if you're going to have a seizure. Jeez, I wish I'd have known that before. I've been hiding it for years and years. So I had this brain operation. They took out part of my front temporal lobe the size of two matchboxes, which is a scary part of the brain. Uh, and I'm fine. I've no, you can see the scar across the top of my head. Here's the photo of my brain if you want to watch it. Um, uh, the 57 staples across the top of my head. And this is what my problems are. And this is the way I have to deal with this. My short-term memory is shot. That's why I use these shirts as a prompt to um, what my next story is. So I've got to practice my short-term memory for when I'm on the telly talking about football. I watch a game, I've got to remember what happened. So I practice things like this. And it's a spoonerism and I just spent hours and hours and hours, weeks and months practicing. It goes like this, once upon a time in a corn country, there lived a very beautiful girl. Her name was Rinda Sella. She lived with her suggly sisters and a stickered wet mother in a Marge lantern. But that has taken me months, months and months to, now it's in my long-term memory. There is a difference. So you, sometimes you just gotta work really hard at something to make it happen. If you really want it, if you're motivated, then you can do anything you like.